Um, so my slide talk is a little, uh, Julian asked me to talk about some different stuff, but I figure some of you guys don't know who I am, so I'm going to sort of start at the beginning of my ceramics career and uh, give you a, a brief window into uh, my life basically since I started clay. Um, and then you can have questions and all that sort of stuff at the end. Um, so these guys are kind of where I started. Like I was working as a nanny, uh, figuring out junior college credits, all that sort of stuff. Um, but when I was taking care of them, I uh, took my very first ceramics class at a community art center where I was completely broke at the time and I couldn't afford to take a class. But I'd always wanted to take a ceramics class. So I basically traded time. I could work the front test and take a class. So I took my very first ceramics class. Um, and I kind of, these guys were the mark for that. So roughly now, it's basically about 17 years. That bio is a little bit old. Um, they just turned 17 this year. Um, but sort of around that time, some things changed in my life. So I was working as a nanny. Um, I discovered clay. Um, and I've, those things sort of shifted in my world as far as the, my understanding of family in addition to what community meant and what, fam and what family meant. Um, and also that I discovered functional ceramics. Um, so besides making functional ceramics, I started collecting it and seeing it. Um, and was inspired by it in a way that it pushed me forward, compelled me sort of to figure out how to make ceramics that I found as compelling as the ceramics that I bought. Um, and it's always funny, I always get sort of asked if I use all of my own ceramics in my cupboard, if, I, if they're filled with my wear. They completely aren't, they're filled with everybody else's wear. Because I find, you know, I love um, functional wear and people's uh, ability to solve those problems differently than I would. Um, so I am obsessed with ceramics to some sort of every level. Um, but also the idea of how ceramics and functional wear particularly bring people together and how those objects are sort of imbued with memory from those events. You know, it's like, it's one of those strange things that if I break a mug, I kind of cry a little bit when I break that mug because it's imbued with the spirit of the person that made it, but also all of the sort of travels and journey I had with that. Um, that object has a lot of meaning to me. And sort of so much more than sort of the stuff that you would buy at Target or whatever. So I like to show pictures of the objects I collect because um, I find uh, great importance to those and they travel. They're the one thing I actually spend money on and uh, tr keep with me as I uh, travel the, the states, basically. Um, I also like to put a picture of these guys. These are my undergrad professors, Robert Brady and Scott Parody. Um, this is some of their work. You know, these guys are kind of like the voices in my head. I sort of started taking clay classes with them on a more serious level. Uh, they very much influenced sort of uh, my aesthetic view and the, the things I value about the craft. Um, and so I like to share their, some of their work. Uh, Bob is actually, Robert Brady is more known as a sculptor, but he makes fabulous pots and uh, was a teacher at Sac State for about 30 years. The Scott's work, Scott was a wood fire guy who started the same year that I did. And um, so I wood fired a lot the first sort of three years I was in clay. And it taught me a lot about form and function and how the sort of nature of firing with fuel, the idea of wood being fuel. Um, it's a huge, very different than plugging your kiln in and setting the timer. Um, this is an eight day Amagama firing. It took three days to load, eight days to fire, a week to cool down. Um, this is some of that early work that uh, my first started making pops. But I learned a lot. It was a really fun period of time. I was not an outdoorsy sort of person. We went out to the woods and basically hauled water from the creek to boil to wash dishes. It was really quite the experience. Um, no running water, porta potty, the whole sort of deal. It was slightly unpleasant for eight days with no shower. Um, but it was a lot of fun also. Lots of, uh, lots of hard work, but lots of fun. Um, so after I was finished with my undergrad, uh, I took some time, ended up moving to the Central Valley. My uh, grandfather developed Alzheimer's pretty seriously. Um, and my plan was sort of to go straight from undergrad to grad school. Um, but my grandpa was a really important person. I spent most of my summers with uh, them. And uh, so I ended up spending about a year and a half helping take care of him, helping my grandma. And I didn't make pots for a couple years, basically. Uh, did lots of driving. My grandpa was a farmer, so we was comfortable driving. And uh, we would sort of go out and look at the fields. But I took a lot of pictures at the time too, and I kind of loved that landscape. It's the landscape I sort of grew up with in the summers, but also just the ebb and flow of that sort of uh, farming seasons and things like that. The landscape completely changed very often. This is at Halloween. 
So after uh, we ended up placing my grandpa, I uh, applied to grad school and I ended up going to Utah State University in Logan, Utah. And I chose it because it was relatively close, but it was also a really interesting school. Uh, I attended a conference in Portland and saw sort of a retrospective show of the past 21 years of their students. And I was really impressed with the quality of work that was coming out of there, that how many people were still working in the field, and the diversity of work. And so it was some place that uh, I felt I could grow as an artist. And also that idea of like how important faculty can be um, for the, the career of a student. I mean, it was one of the things I don't think I realized at the time, uh, but after grad school, it's been really quite important thinking about my two professors there sort of being my cheerleaders after school, you know, helping me with opportunities and writing letters and doing that type of stuff. So this is some of the pots I started out making. So it was a three-year program, um, and it was kind of an interesting journey for me because I sort of started someplace comfortable. I had been wood firing, and so someplace, and then Utah 